Well, hello everyone, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be looking at patterns. Patterns in perimeter. We are in our home links, Unit 7, Lesson 9, and if you take a look at the picture up at the top of this assignment, it says, Alice was making squares out of toothpicks, you know, as one normally does. She noticed a pattern involving the length of one side and the perimeter of the square. Complete the table and then answer the questions that follow. Well, Alice noticed that if she used one toothpick per side of a square, that when you add up those measurements, you get a total of four toothpicks, or a measure of four, let's say, units, because we don't know how long these toothpicks are. Again, perimeter, my friends, is the measure of the outside. So if I'm just counting toothpicks here, one, two, three, four, I've got four toothpicks, I've got a measurement of four for my perimeter. Now, when she doubled the number of toothpicks she used per side, that basically doubled the perimeter, okay? Since she had one toothpick per side with the small square, then she made two toothpicks be the sides for her bigger square. So, again, if each side has two toothpicks per side, and there are four sides to a square, right? All I'm doing here is multiplying 2 times 4. And of course, it's going to give me 8. Okay? Of course, when I'm dealing with the perimeter of a square, each side is going to be the same measurement, right? So, to find the side length of a, a square that has a perimeter of 12 that we know to be a square, we just have to use a little reverse multiplication, otherwise known as division. What times 4 gives me 12? Well, of course, that would be 3. And 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 4 is 20. Ah, uh, you probably figured this out long before I wrote this down. This table is just helping us identify the relationship between the length of one side and the perimeter of a square. Well, again, like I said, if a square has equal size, then I know that... Uh, the length of one side is going to be one-fourth of the perimeter, or another way to put that is the perimeter of a square is four times the length of a side running out of room here. Because squares have four sides, right? So if I know the measurement of one side, all I have to do to figure out the perimeter is to multiply that side's length times four, right? So for problem number two, it says what would be the perimeter of a square with a side length of 25 toothpicks? Well, to solve that, all I'd have to do is multiply 25 times 4. And of course, you and I know that's 100. 100 toothpicks, 100 meters, 100 yards, 100 miles, whatever it is that you're measuring, the length of one side, you just multiply by 4. Okay? So I'll let you try the next two problems on your own because, of course, you and I both know squares have four sides and each side is the same. So let's take a look at the uh, division problems here, okay? 753 divided by 3. Hmm, how should I solve this problem? Well, why don't I take the partial quotients approach just for fun, okay? So with partial quotients, I'm going to think, how many groups of 3 can I get out of 753? So I'm thinking in hundreds right now. Can I get 100 groups of 3? Well, yeah, because 3 times 100 is 300, okay? Right? Because 3 times 100 is 100, so that gives me product of 300. Then I can subtract 3, 5, 4, oh, 453. I could probably get another group of 100 out of that, right? Because, again, 453 is less than 300. So I know my... Quotient's going to be at least 200, right? Because 100 plus 100 is 200. 
I gotta subtract again. All right, now I have 153. Well, 153 has that 15 in the beginning of it because what is 150 but 1510? So I could probably get at least 50 more threes out of that because five tens times three is gonna give me 15 tens or 150. And then when I subtract, oh, look at that, I'm left with just one more three. How many more threes can I get out of three? Well, that would be one, because three times one is three. So now I have all these quotients, partial quotients laying around, I just need to add them all together. So 100, 200, 250, 251. Like so. So that is my quotient. 251. Well, we breezed through that assignment pretty easily, right? Right? Well, if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, no, Mr. Wasman, I did not. This was tough. I'm confused. Help. Well, you probably know what I'm going to say next, and that is you need to talk to your math teacher. Ask them questions. Pull them aside. Shoot them an email if you're a virtual student. Uh, but let them know, hey, this uh, perimeter business, I still can't wrap my head around it. Or long division with uh, partial quotients. I, I help. You know, if that's how you're feeling, if that's what you're thinking, then you need to let somebody know. Because, you know, teachers are there to help you, to help you gain the skills that you will need for fifth grade and beyond. Well, I hope this video was helpful in some sense. Uh, until we talk again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.